What's up guys, in this video I am going to review Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. Now this is a book that I was super excited to read, it just came out because one of my favorite books ever is Deep Work by Cal Newport. And if you haven't read that book, you absolutely have to check it out. You can read Digital Minimalism first, but make sure you check out Deep Work. And I think I was really excited like th about this book, probably just as you are from the title alone because I think that this is something that we desperately need right now as a society and as a world, because if you think about it, the iPhone came out only in 2009. So we haven't even had smartphones for that long, we haven't had the internet for that long, we haven't had social media for that long, and all of this is so new, and even for the most disciplined, intelligent people, these things are so addicting, it's crazy, and so I think that we all need a guideline or rules to go by or some kind of understanding for how to use the internet, how to use social media, how to use technology in a way that benefits us, but in a way that doesn't take away from our lives and negatively affect us. And so this book is essential, is so beneficial, is really good in helping you do that. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the more profound points about the book and also what I thought about it as a whole. And I'm gonna say off the bat that I do not think that this book was as good as Deep Work. Now, deep work, that's a lot to live up to. This book is still really good. I don't think it's quite as profound. And a lot of the points that are in this, bo in this book, um, he actually went over in the first place in deep work. But this book is specifically focused on technology, specifically focused on social media. Now, the first point I have to bring up is the title. I think that the title is incredible. He nailed it. He's gonna sell thousands of copies of this book based on the title alone. And as you guys know, minimalism has become quite the buzzword and a lot of people are using it because it sells very well. Now, I think he could have titled this many different things, but he chose digital minimalism and he devotes the first part of the book kind of to going over that and to playing into that. So in the beginning, he recommends that you do a 30-day digital declutter. Um, so basically taking 30 days off of any technology tools, internet apps, social media that you think might be negatively impacting your life or any tools that aren't 100% essential. Now, I think that that's an incredible recommendation and I think that taking 30 days off of any behavior or substance that might be hurting you is a great way to see what the substance is actually doing to you. And so as you're going throughout the book, he's constantly referring to people who are good with technology and who are careful with technology as digital minimalists. And I think that that's cool, but as you're going throughout the book, I definitely notice myself thinking like, wow, this is kind of pretentious or this is kind of funny. And it's kind of true. But as you go further throughout the book, it gets a lot better. So I think the second half of the book is a lot better than the first half. I think that it picks up as you go along. Um, throughout the whole book, there's stories, anecdotes. He takes his entire email list or a lot of people, like 4,000 people, through an experiment of their digital declutter and documents their results. So there's a ton of information in there. And even if you're very astute and you've thought about this a lot, there's gonna be a lot of new ideas in there for you. Now, one of the most important points in the entire book is a point that he brought up originally in Deep Work, and that is the any benefit mindset. So constantly when people think about social media, one of the first things that comes up for them is the any benefit mindset. So they say, well, you know, I like using Facebook because um, I get this benefit of seeing my friends that live in other countries or that I haven't seen in a long time. I get to see what they're up to. Therefore, I should use Facebook. So what that means is you're taking uh, a technology tool or a social media or an app and you're saying, well, if there's any benefit that I can get out of this, I should use it to get that benefit. And what he's saying is that that is a maximalist approach and it's a flawed approach and that the minimalist approach is asking, well, what are the costs of using Facebook? What are the costs of using Twitter? What are the costs of using these social media platforms? And the truth is that there are ridiculous, insane costs to using social media, to using YouTube, to using the internet, to using Reddit. There's insane costs in your personal life, your professional life, everything about you is being costed, is being taxed from using these platforms. And so what I like is that he's realistic in this book. Like he has, um, he has a TED talk called like something like quit social media. And he's never used social media. The, the TED talk has a lot of views, but in this book, he's a lot more realistic. And in this book, he says, you know what? I know people are gonna use social media. I know people are gonna use Snapchat, but I think that we can use it more appropriately. So the whole point of the book is asking yourself, why am I using this in the first place? What are the benefits I'm getting out of it? What are the costs? How is it taxing my life? And then how can I use it appropriately so that I don't get too many of the negative results and I can get all of the positive results? 
So towards the end of the book, he gives some really, really good recommendations on how to use that. The first one, the biggest one, is gonna be getting the apps off of your phone. So the smartphone is ubiquitous. The smartphone is on you at all times. It's heavily addicting, and these companies know that and that they've invested millions of dollars. They focus purely on the apps now because 80 to 90 to 100% of the use of these different platforms is on mobile, not on a desktop. So what he recommends is that, hey, you can still use these apps, you can still use these platforms, just make sure that you get it off of your phone. Make sure you're not using it on your phone, get it on your desktop computer, therefore you'll be using it way less, but you can still get the benefits from it. The next thing he recommends, which I thought was really, really smart, is to schedule your social media time. And he's very realistic again. So from the beginning, he's saying, hey, if you are new to this, if you're a little bit addicted, take one hour. So say, hey, I can use whatever I want. I can use Reddit, YouTube, Netflix, Instagram, as much as I want from 8 to 9 p.m. every single day. But outside of that, I cannot use it at all. And so what you're doing is you are scheduling your zoning out time. You're scheduling your social media time. You're scheduling your time wastage so that outside of those periods, you can have a clean, clear mind and you can focus on what is really important to you and what is actually going to move you towards achieving your hopes and dreams. I thought that was really smart. And he says, as you go further along the path, you can narrow it down even more. So he tells a story about someone who uses Facebook from like 9 to 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings in no time outside of that. And their logic was, hey, you know, I'm getting some benefit out of using Facebook. I want to see what's going on in my friends' lives that I don't see very often. And, you know, I want to check in on some groups. I want to respond to some messages. So how long would that actually take me? Well, maybe it would take me 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes once a week. And if you think about it, you're not going to miss anything by checking a new site or an app or Facebook or whatever it is once a week because it's going to show you all of the most important news at the very beginning because it has those algorithms. So you're going to see what's most important. You can do all that stuff in a very short amount of time. And then the entire rest of your week, you can be happy, productive, clean, and healthy. The last point that I'll make on this book that I thought was really amazing was the concept of solitude. And this hit me really hard. So what he said is that we need a new definition for solitude. Because if you think about it, when you think about solitude, you think, well, just being alone. Like, hey, I'm actually alone right now. But what he's saying is that because of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, podcasts, audiobooks, you can be outside in nature, in the woods, and still connected. So what he's saying is that uh, solitude is actually the absence of input from other minds. The absence of input from other minds. And I was pretty floored by this because it made me realize we are living in this information overload era. And I do not think that biologically homo sapiens are handled, are equipped to handle the ridiculous amount of information that we are taking in on a daily basis every single day. And if you think about it, there are seven billion humans on the planet right now, and probably four or five billion of them are connected to you on the internet, providing you feedback, information, news, technology, all these different things. So it is so overwhelming, so confusing. And I think that one of the best things that you can do is to take time in solitude, is what he's saying. So take time away from the input of other minds. And so the last point I'll bring up that actually wasn't from Cal Newport's book, but is one of my own ideas, which I'm surprised he didn't talk about, is putting your phone in black and white mode. So this is something I've been doing for the past six to eight months. It's given me a ton of benefits because when you have your phone in black and white mode, it's way less stimulating, way less enticing. Um, All of the notifications are set to red, which I found is a very alarming color. So I'm going to show you guys how I do this on an iPhone because a lot of people don't know how. So you jump into your settings, you go to display accommodations, you get in there, you turn it off. I'll show you how to do this when I'm on my phone. And what you'll notice is that you are going to be way less stimulated from your phone. And whenever I take um, the black and white settings off to like use GPS or to check a photo that I need to see the color on, It is insane how addicting the phone is. It is insane how overwhelming and stimulating it feels to me because I have my phone in black and white mode. Also, as you'll notice, I have an old iPhone. So I have an iPhone 5S and it is much, much smaller than the phones that people have today. 
And I was reading an article on the Wall Street Journal that the larger your phone, the more apps you have on it, the more time you spend on it statistically. And if you haven't already noticed, all smartphone companies are moving towards bigger phones, bigger phones, bigger phones, because they are hyper aware of this. And they know that the bigger the phone, the more reliant on your, and you're gonna be, the more apps you're gonna use, the more time you're gonna spend on it, and also the more money that you're gonna be willing to pay for the smartphone because it's bigger, because it's gonna be replacing your computer, your laptop, your iPad, all these different things. And so what I recommend is if you can, get a small smartphone. You're gonna use it a lot less, have it in black and white, get all the addicting apps off of your phone, and it's gonna become something that helps you instead of something that hurts you. So guys, I hope that this video was helpful. If you liked what I was talking about, I recommend hitting the subscribe button. My name's Callum, and once every two weeks, I produce a video on minimalism, meditation, spirituality, or surrendering the ego to God. So if you like any of those subjects, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next week. Ciao.